What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network, the channel dedicated to providing you with competitive Pokemon TCG content. Today, we're looking at a deck profile that I am super excited about, Zorark Weavile. I've been working on this deck for a little while now. Um, I was keeping it under wraps for Philly, but it looks like Weavile is an obvious tech that everyone's working on. And since I think I've found a list that's very close to optimal, I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, so yeah, let's hop right in. We're looking at one Hoopa with Scoundrel Guard. It can't be hit by GX and EX abilities. So what you do is you use this versus decks like Metagross GX that, uh, don't really have a good non-GX attacker. Um, I've tested it. They can tech uh, baby Registeel, but it does not win the matchup. Um, because once you knock out their Registeel once, you just stretch your Hoopa back. You start it over again. Um, so yeah, Hoopa works pretty well as a wall um, against a number of decks. If you figure out that your opponent isn't playing a GX, a non-GX attacker, or at least something that's efficient versus Hoopa, you can go the Hoopa route. Just a single card there to help with uh, Metagross and any other matchups that you find like that that can be iffy otherwise. Then we're playing 3-2 Weavile. Weavile has the evil Admonition attack. For one Dark Energy, you do 50 damage for to the active Pokemon for each ability on your opponent's board. So if your opponent has two Zoroarks and a Tapu Lele, you're doing 150. Um, so I'll wait to talk about some of the common numbers we'll see until I'm done looking at the whole list. Uh, but yeah, Weavile, Evil Admonition, a very good card in our current meta right now. Then we have our generic 4-4 Zorak GX, draw support, and our other attacker. Uh, I don't think I really need to go too much into why we're using Zorak, but trade's a great draw ability, right? As beating is a fairly efficient attack. Zorak GX is an all-around busted card. Uh, we're playing Baby Buzzwool since unit energy has fighting and dark typing. Baby Buzzwool works out well here. Um sledgehammer if your opponent has four ooh, excuse me guys if your opponent has four prize cards remaining sledgehammer does 120 so this is easily knocking out uh fighting weak pokemon like opposing zoric gx's tapu coco is a very important card in this deck in my opinion so it has free retreat which one is super important because we lost floatstone and free retreaters are really good right now also, flying flip damage is important. Early game preferably, but you can do it later. But it fixes math a lot for this deck. If you can get one or two flying flips off early on and then just clean up your board with the evil admonition because it's knocking everything out, the game becomes very easy. That's why I'm playing two Tapu Koko. Um, I like that strategy a lot, trying to start out with flying flips early if your evil admonition isn't already one-shotting everything. Then we have three Tapu Lele GX just for consistency purposes. And it's also probably your best attacker versus Buzzwole decks, which are pretty rough to beat. Uh, going into the trainers, we have two Rescue Stretcher because you want to chain those evil admonition Weaviles to close out your game. A lot of times you'll just attack three times with evil admonition, so two stretchers are very important. Um, also, like I said, if you're going the Hoopa route, and your opponent knocks out one Hoopa, you might need to get it back. So the Rescue Stretchers help with us chaining specific attackers for spe specific uh, situations. Two Timer Ball, since we lost Evo Soda, Timer Ball is our new Search for an Evolution card that I'm using in almost every Zorark deck. Maybe every Zorark deck, actually. Uh, I would like to go up to three, but I'm trying to make the deck consistent. Uh, consistently hit the energy and get the setup I want so I'm not sure if I would need more timer ball because really all I ever want is a Weavile and then however many Zorks I can get uh, but I don't really need to flood the board I really just need a Weavile and then a new Sneasel on the bench ready to go next turn uh, we're playing two Lily that's our designated turn one draw support uh, if we get a really great start, maybe sometimes we'll judge to put our opponent down to a four card hand. 
but usually we're looking for Lily and with four Ultra Balls and three Lele and two Lily herself, we're usually able to uh, get our designated turn one supporter. We're playing four Nest Ball since Bridget is gone. Nest Ball is our new way to get basic Pokemon down. I'm not a huge fan of Fan Club or Apricorn Maker so far in testing. I really like the strategy to empty your hand and then draw a lot of cards with Lily. That's been my go-to turn one strategy for Zorark decks. Um, two Switch, because if we're going second... <laughs> Excuse me, sorry guys. So to switch, if we're going second, I think it's really important to be able to nest ball DCE Coco, switch to Coco, and start flying flip early as possible to put pressure on the board. Um, so we're playing to switch. Also, switches are just great because we lost float stone anyway, um, but usually it's being used because I want to rush a Tapu Coco into play and start flying flip as soon as possible. We're playing four Cynthia. It's the best draw support we have in the game. Shuffle draw six. Um, four Guzma. Uh, it's the best gust effect we have in the game. Uh, Counter catcher could be used here since we are going with the early Tapu Koko flying flip. Um, but we're not always going to be going behind. So four Guzma seems the best. Also, since we lost puzzle of time, we don't have puzzles to get them back. So maxing out the guzmas there or ultra ball discard to search a pokemon consistent draw uh, consistent search card uh, we have one mallow put two cards to the top uh, shuffle your deck so we can get any two cards with trade needing one of our energy maybe a rescue stretcher or weavile is something that i commonly use mallow for uh, two choice band to try to make sure our weaviles are doing as much damage as possible to judge we have a lot of setup decks right now there's rayquaza that draws 10 cards there's metagross at algorithms uh, we have steven's resolve the new supporter in the game that search for three cards and your turn uh, maybe some sylveon gx's will be around a judge is just a very good card right now since we lost n judge is the go-to to replace it and then we have two Professor Kakui, draw two, and your attacks do 20 more. Again, another good card to make sure we've all doing as much damage as it can. And then we move on to our energy, and we have three Fairy Fighting Dark units, two Basic Dark, and four DCE. Uh, we're not utilizing the Fairy part of that unit energy since we are already handedly beating Rayquaza. I don't need a Fairy attacker. So I'm just going to go down the tier list that I have written out, which will be available on FlipSideGaming.com very soon. Um, and I'm going to say how I think this deck pairs up to all of them. So first we have Vika Ray. I have played close to two dozen games against Vika Ray with this deck so far on PTCGO and in real life, and I have not dropped a single game. I have a 100% win rate versus Rayquaza. Um, this is a, a very, very hard counter to Vika Ray. Um, Zoro Rock, uh, I'm slightly over 50 50 right now versus Zoro Rock. So I'm, normally Weavile was bad versus Zoro Rock, but let's say they have a Lele, a Zoro Rock, and a Lycan Rock. That's three abilities. So you're doing 150. You go Choice Bank, Akui, that's 200. You're okay owing their Lycan Rocks. If they knock out either a Zorak GX to start out the game, or let's say a Coco and a Weavile, you can go in with a Sledgehammer to take two prizes off of one of their Zoraks, and then you're only two prizes away from winning the game. Uh, I think Zorak is absolutely winnable, and it's actually a pretty fun matchup to play on both sides. Um, Psychic Malamar is slightly favorable. They have to play down, I don't know, maybe two Malamars and a backup Inke, and then either, um, they'll try to not play down their Dawn Wings, but they'll probably have a Marsh Shadow or a Necrozma or a Lele down, so typically at least three abilities, and you'll see that's kind of the, um, that's kind of the trend. If people are playing against Weavile, they can limit their board to about two but most of the time three abilities especially something like malamar that needs abilities to work uh, so if they have three abilities you're 
either knocking out their marsh shadows or you are a choice band away from knocking out most of their other attackers i think all of their other attackers actually um, but their marsh shadow can prove to be an issue if they're one-shotting your zorix every turn with it it depends on who can run more consistently usually it's the zorix deck that is a little more consistent in the mid game and which that's why i say this is a slightly favorable matchup for us uh, Zorark Garbador is a rough one actually because Garbador does not use abilities so they can typically survive with just playing down two Zorarks and have Evil Admonition doing 100 to them so you need Kakuis to knock out their Garbadors <sighs> excuse me but uh, our ride speed and can clean up the trash lanch Garbadors try to force them to play a Zorak heavy game this is a matchup where Tapu Koko and Buzzwool come in a lot so you can soften up everything with flying flips early to go in with evil admonitions later the later the game gets the more likely we are for our opponent to maybe have a couple extra abilities on the board maybe they have to lay life for a big guzma turn uh maybe they need more zorak because they're just not drawing their energies but flying flip works really well in the early game sledgehammer if they ever hit four prizes uh clean up with riot speeding and evil admonition that's pretty much the game plan against any deck that you you need to also utilize Riotus Speeding in, uh, you can clean up with a mix of them depending on the situation. I think Zora Garb is about 50-50. Um, if your opponent is playing optimally, it can be 50-50 to slightly unfavored. But if your opponent is misplaying here or there, I think it's really, really winnable for you on uh, the Zorak Weavile side. Uh, Zoropod is another iffy one. Um, typically, I think they can have less abilities on the board. Sometimes they'll forget that Wimpod has an ability. So it's very hard for them to chain Golisopods with a Sorola and Evolve because they can't leave a Wimpod sitting on the board or it's an extra 50 damage for our Evil Admonitions. This is another match where you want to Flying Flip and Sledgehammer force your opponent into giving you a heavy Sledgehammer turn. Uh, but those early flying flips are what makes or breaks this game. If you can get off two early flying flips, I think you're really, really set. It depends on how aggressive your opponent is able to go. I think this one is slightly unfavored to favor to slightly unfavored to 50-50, um, depending on how well your opponent is playing. Uh, next, we have Buzzwool GX variants. I'm not gonna lie, it's not pretty. Uh, this deck historically has had a problem with buzzwell and i don't think it changes if anything it got worse because we lost mu ex and we can't play that as a counter anymore um you can try to flying flip spread early to fix numbers but we're weak to fighting so it's very possible that the coco will die very quickly uh most of our deck is weak to fighting um yeah, it's, it's just, it's not very good, but I'm going to take that loss at the moment because Buzzrock is not as popular as I think it actually should be right now. Uh, but yeah, we're taking a hard loss to uh, Buzzwool at the moment, unless you want to really tech out the deck for a bad matchup. Um, next is Metagross GX. Like I said, Hoopa is our game plan there, and it's been working thus far. Without Hoopa, I don't think you have a fighting chance of winning that game because your evil admonitions do not one-shot Metagross, um, and then they just max potion and then knock you out. But if your Hoopa is unprized, you are very much so in that game. You just set up a Hoopa and maybe a backup attacker like Coco or Sneasel so you don't get benched if they pop out a baby Registeel. Um, and then you try to chain your Hoopa. You can even set up a Zorak if you want. They only have four Guzma. You just have to make sure you don't give them more than five prizes that aren't Hoopa if they're not playing a baby attacker. Um, but Hoopa is your uh, ace in the hole for that matchup. Uh, baby Buzz, Garbador shrine of punishment is not a good matchup for you it's another buzzwool ish variant it includes baby buzzwool and typically the baby regirock from uh celestial storm 
I don't think this matchup is winnable at all for you. They only play non-GX, non-EX attackers. They play Shrine to punish our Zorark GX. The flying flips aren't going to work because they're just going to one-shot our Cocos. They don't typically have many abilities on the board. They'll usually have Deancey and Oranguru, uh, but they can maybe withhold one of them if they want our Evil Admonition to just do 50 a turn without modifiers so that is another matchup i do not plan on teching for because i think it's that bad um but i also think that deck is tier two i don't know if, how popular it's going to get uh so yeah but that is a bad one for us uh dusk main necrozma gx magnazone typically they'll have a magnazone and a rabambi on board possibly a lele um, that's three abilities. If they have the Lele, this matchup is very winnable. If not, you have to get some good early flying flip damage. But all in all, I'm going to chalk this one up as unfavored. Uh, they do have non-GX attackers in Magnazone already. So Hoopa is not a completely viable option. Uh, but it does depend on how your opponent plays if they need a Lele. If you get multiple flying flips off early... Uh, but overall, I think it's unfavored. Um, Ultra Malamar is definitely very different from Psychic Malamar because Ultra Necrozma does not have an ability, so that's one less ability on their board. Um, also, it has 190 HP, which means you need to flying flip even more. This one is slightly unfavored, and I don't think it's getting to 50-50. Um, potentially some sort of fairy tech might push this one over the edge since we're already running unit energy and ultra necrozma is weak to fairy um it wouldn't be baby tapu lele though um and it also wouldn't be dedene i don't think because you would need choice ban and kakui on the same turn to knock out ultra necrozma if you really wanted to tech for that potentially you could Add another choice band in and then add a kakui in, i'm sorry added the dene in maybe a pal pad to preserve your good cooies um if that's a matchup you're worried about but another tier two deck that's unfavored for this this is more centralized in its tier one matchups being positive um and then the last two on my list we have zorak decidueye and alone nine tails gx i don't think either of these are going to be hugely popular zorak decidueye is easy because their board is literally just all abilities um, and alone nine tails gx is quite the opposite they don't really need abilities on their board they'll have one zork gx possibly two for draw support but they're alone nine tail gx and their volpix do not have any abilities on them uh, so they can tank damage pretty well there but again lower tier decks that this deck has a problem with tier one and tier 1.5 it's very favored for this deck it's all like 50 50 to favored for this deck and what people are calling the best deck in format right now vika ray is overly positive for zorak weavile so i put a lot of time and testing into this deck i think this is close to the optimal list i really really like this it's a huge consideration for cups for me this weekend and i wanted to share this with everyone so i hope you enjoyed the video make sure you check out flipsidegaming.com for free articles from me also use coupon code celio all caps for 10 percent off of your next order ten dollars or more check me out at social medias uh in the description below and i'll also copy and paste this deck list for ptcgo in my description Make sure you subscribe if you liked the video and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.